Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the conference. I hope you had a good time, uh, socialized with lunch time, and uh, enjoy the food and the drinks and talking with people. And I hope you are ready now for the second session of the first day of conference. And to open the session today, we have a very uh, important keynote speaker who will tell us how to design and implement an innovation-driven policy at EU level. So I would like to introduce you, Peter Droll. He's from European Commission, DG Research and Innovation. He's the director of Prosperity in DG Research and Innovation. Peter has been working in the European Commission for more than 20 years with position in environment, enlargement, negotiation, industry policy, innovation, and research. He was a cabinet member of Enlargement Commission, Gunter, um, I will pronounce and maybe it's wrong, but um, Gunter Verhogen, and the head of cabinet of the Science and Research Com Commissioner, Janes Botonik. And since 2010, he is at the DJ Research and Innovation, where he was first responsible for innovation, then for industrial technologies. Um, so, Peter, we had a very intense morning uh, with the result from Siri, and we explained how Siri contributes to the smart specialization strategy for sustainability. And in the afternoon, we are very happy to, to learn more about the designing and implementation of innovation-driven uh, policy at EU level. Can you share with us um, your insight on this topic? And uh, we we are very happy to have you here with the city conference. And um, even if online, uh, all the, the speech is recorded and we share online later with all the audience who would like to um, enjoy the session. And uh, welcome to our conference again. And the floor is yours. Thank you so much for this kind invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I, in the preparatory talks we had uh, also with you, I, I felt your passion for regional innovation and for driving the regional ecosystems for a stronger, better European Union. So I'm particularly happy to share with you some personal thoughts on innovation policy, how we do it in, uh, in Europe. Uh, so. Um, to, um, yeah, pleasure to share that with you. The structure of my presentation is in the next slide, and I will start with a short overview. Um, if we could have the first slide then. I start yeah, with we're a, changing the slide. Next slide, please. I, I start with a short overview of the history of innovation policy at EU level, and then look at how we measure innovation performance um, at national, at EU level, at regional level, but also internationally, and the latest trends there before uh, going through the policy measures we have taken, are taken, are, are, are taking now. And so that's the structure. Let's start with the history of innovation policy at EU level. And so um, what are we talking about, first of all? Innovation in the public understanding is synonymous with hope. It's good. Um, uh, that's very encouraging for anyone who does innovation policy. Um, there is one possible misunderstanding that it is seen as technology only, technology driven. And some of you might know the story of Lord Montagu in the 17th century uh, wanted to be able to do his gaming was a British lord um, without being interrupted, so he asked for a slice of bread, a slice of ham and cheese, and another slice of, a slice of bread on top, so that he could eat while doing other things, and he was the Earl of Sandwich, and that was the birthplace of Sandwich. has nothing to do with technology, but it's a major innovation. So uh, very important that we don't understand innovation only as technology-driven. For uh, the, the, the official or technical definition of innovation, we use the OECD Oslo Manual. It's a basic paper. In short, it said any new or substantially improved product uh, put on the market, um, product or process. 
And we at the EU, we took innovation from the very beginning in the very broad meaning of its sense, with all facets uh, of innovation uh, in uh, academia, in industry, in administration um, as well, and in the public, in, in the civil society and among citizens, so the quadruple helix, if you wish. So when did it all start? Let's have a look at the next slide. Uh, yeah, so it started in um, 1995, um, and we have a picture for that, which I would like to show you on the um, next slide. Uh, this is a, okay, so this is a photo of a copy of the green paper, uh, which is in my office, I'm very proud of it, which was a beginning in 1995 of EU innovation policy. It's a rather young policy. Uh, let's also be aware of that. And please click one more time because what we see in that paper is really, click, could click on the slide, is really great stuff. Uh, it's amazing. Um, the policy tools, the actors, they are quite the same, the challenges actually are quite the same as we fa face today. Um, what has changed is the technology examples, and that is a good reminder for us how fast the technological process is. Huh? Uh, I, I'm sure there are some participants here who don't really know what a, tele um, a telex was, huh? uh, and, and this green paper speaks about technologies like, like that. So um, we started with that, and if I briefly summarize the um, developments of EU innovation policy, we had uh, started with a linear concept, investment and research, and then um, technology transfer and the markets do the rest. Now, then we looked more, which is a good picture, but of course not a complete one. We looked more into innovation systems, um, and uh, that was also the theory then developing uh, and focused on networks and clusters, very important part also for, for regions. And then we came to the innovation union and open innovation. Uh, the innovation union was perhaps the first attempt to have a fully fledged EU policy strategy and action uh, on innovation. And um, perhaps we can have a, the next slide, please. Yes, it had a very, uh, I mentioned earlier, we had always a broad understanding, but this was really acting on all dimensions of innovation, um, on the knowledge base, on getting ideas to the market, on maximizing cohesion, very important point, on, on pooling uh, forces in innovation partnerships, and also uh, with a strong external dimension. And the idea was uh, to bring this to the economic policy making uh, of, uh, of the EU. After that, we went to open innovation. Uh, um, uh, that was with Carlos Moedas as commissioner, open science, open innovation, open to the world, uh, with a key insight. Uh, and perhaps I can um, put it like that, is um, not necessarily the best people work for you. You need to be open to cooperate. Not you don't have to own intellectual property right to benefit from it. You don't have to be the first on the market to benefit in the market. So this openness was the key um, element of the innovation policy. And uh, now um, we don't. Uh, I, I think what what is changing now um, and is very important change. We give an overall new direction to innovation under the European Green Deal. I've been in the Commission for quite some time. Nigina has mentioned it. Please, we don't change the slides yet. I'll, I'll accelerate in a second. Um, so I've never seen, uh, perhaps since the big enlargement process, um, a project at EU level which was so and Oh, en encompassing, so integrating, and so well known uh, across the EU as a Green Deal. It is a fundamental shift of policy. It is uh, a radical change of direction if you just look at the targets we have um, identified for just 2030. 
with uh, eight different work streams on, uh, uh, around the Green Deal. So this is the overall direction which has a direct impact on all EU innovation policy measures. So, and I, I'll say a bit more uh, at the, about that at the end. So let's look at innovation performance, my second um, part here in my, uh, in, in my little contribution to your conference. The um, measuring innovation is quite difficult. Uh, and when we started with the European Innovation Scoreboard, um, there were quite smart people saying um, you cannot measure innovation and um, the way you do it anyway is wrong. By now it's quite established and you see here um, the framework which uh, with, with top experts from across Europe we have developed over the years and which is now well recognized. Uh, and we have to do it with human resources, the, the research systems, where you need digitalization, of course with investments, um, private, public, uh, at local level, um, with um, innovation activities, uh, including intellectual property rights and, and patents, but also with exports, high-tech exports, um, employment impacts, and, and, and environmental sustainability. So um, uh, quite a robust framework by now. And if we look at the results, if we could go to the next slide, for the European Innovation Scoreboard. This is a ranking. And the ranking is always a dangerous thing, but for policy making, important. Um, because this focuses the mind uh, and are, uh, triggers questions. And that is the basis then for looking at more evidence. So um, you see here uh, the innovation leaders, the, the countries uh, in, in green, uh, uh, the strong innovators, moderate, and the emerging innovators ranked uh, uh, based on the latest data. Um, it's not such a big surprise, but if we look at the next slide, although there are always some changes, huh? Belgium is a very important example of a country um, which is catching up. Uh, so we have these four performance groups and you see the geographic uh, distribution. Um, but then if you look, look at the next slide, um, you see that the um, performance change, performance, yeah, please back to the previous one, performance change over time, you see in dark green the innovation leaders, and they're quite good. Huh? Uh, you cannot be a leader if you don't keep up a good um, progress rate, but you have um, uh, less strong innovating countries uh, which are doing particularly well and that then re is reflected also over time in the overall ranking. So just for me the power of these scoreboards is enormous for policy making. Uh, it, it makes it to uh, the public debate and helps them to look um, and what could be a possible policy response because the scoreboard is not a policy answer. It doesn't tell you what to do. It gives you, it's like a mirror where you can look and see and then compare and then take actions. And there are many countries uh, which take this as one of the inputs to their uh, strategies when they develop their innovation strategies. And we do the same, if you come to the next slide, please, we do the same for regional. I know this is still an international comparison. So um, we are at EU, uh, if you take the EU average, uh, behind Japan, United States, Australia, Canada, and uh, South Korea. Um, uh, in the right graph, you see in the cross, in the middle, that's the EU average. Uh, we take, took us as the benchmark. Um, we, we would, of course, like to be on the top left corner of this chart. So uh, top uh, uh, right corner of this chart. So um, we are, as EU, so-so, um, uh, we are not the best. Some member states are top, uh, but uh, as EU, um, we, uh, we can, um, we, we, we should accept this challenge and improve our overall innovation performance. So with that, let's look at the regional performance innovation performance uh, among the regional um, uh, regions here. The important message, wasn't there a slide before, let's check um, on the regional, no, okay, good. Um, the important message here is that you have 
regional innovation leaders in all parts of uh, Europe. Uh, so 38 regional innovation leaders and 67 strong innovators. So it is perhaps a bit more of a balanced picture. Uh, and the next slide will show us um, also here the um, performance change over uh, the last seven years. And you, uh, you would like to be in a green area. I hope you are. Uh, if not, it's an additional um, challenge and encouragement to, to act. So the indicators are quite similar to the um, innovation scoreboard. And um, if we come to the next slide, this is an interactive tool, which I would like, both are interactive, which I would like to recommend uh, if you haven't used them yet heavily. Um, there's really uh, important data, which helps to take evidence-based action. But that's not all we started last year, or actually this year, this year in January, we prom published a new scoreboard, the Transition Performance Index. And that is because we realized if we go towards sustainability, if we want to achieve, we have a, a set our targets under the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, do we really know uh, whether we are on track? Do I know with the mandate uh, for prosperity, whether Europe is advancing on prosperity? I definitely cannot use GDP alone as a benchmark. So, uh, next slide, please. Um, the purpose of, of this new index is really to measure our progress towards sustainability. And that was a completely new framework for monitoring. And uh, in the next slide, you will, you will see the framework we have used with the four dimensions of um, sustainability, economic, social, environmental, and institutional. Uh, how the governance uh, uh, of the transition is happening. Um, and the uh, really important element of this transition index is that we used existing, we, we, we took all the lessons from the innovation performance uh, scoreboard. Um, uh, it's internationally comparable data, and we have started immediately by looking at where the B stand international. And that we can see at the next slide. We first see here the EU um, countries, um, and perhaps the next slide is a bit clearer, um, where you see the European Union top leaders, uh, with um, Denmark starting the Netherlands, uh, you see in the Americas, um, and also in the other regions of, um, of the world. And you, uh, the next slide shows us uh, how um, in the in the different income countries, according to the World Bank, um, where, where the top performers are. Uh, the bottom line here is that Europe is, well, I think we are top, strongest, in uh, leading the transition um, globally. Uh, and that's, I think, a confirmation um, that uh, the Green Deal is not only the new direction, but also a huge opportunity for us as continent um, to, to take leadership and play our role globally. Um, so let me come now quickly to the uh, key policy actions. Uh, and I'll start with the Green Deal, uh, uh, which I mentioned already. Is there anyone who does not know the slide, who has not seen the slide yet? I wonder, I, I, I think you have all seen it. It is really the overall new direction uh, and uh, shaping our innovation policy. Uh, if it's about zero pollution action plan, if it's about the new chemical strategy, it, if it's about biodiversity, if it's about industrial policy, uh, where, uh, where we are now co-creating pathways for transition for industry, starting with energy intensive industries um, uh, and these 14 ecosystems we have defined under the industrial policy. So this is really shaping the, also the innovation policy measures uh, under EU policy under the overall umbrella of, of the European Green Deal. And then uh, we come to the next policy area more closely to uh, our topic here, research and innovation. You have seen the slide from my colleague uh, Marta earlier today. Um, 
what I would like to focus here is really on one important aspect that we need to be better in translating research results into the society. And that is one of the key findings of the, uh, of the era and translated, if you look at the next slide, into um, the priority actions. Uh, and that is, uh, we have now this Pact for Research and Innovation, um, uh, which puts as one of the top priorities value creation. And we will work across Europe for principles, how we will valorize knowledge across the EU, a very important element uh, that this European, uh, European research area includes this dimension of, of innovation um, with a focus on uh, actually two aspects, knowledge um, valorization, one I mentioned, and also technology roadmaps for the transition, which is linked to the industrial policy I mentioned. And if we can come to the next slide, um, um, this is um, basically just um, yeah, just to put this in the overall context of ERA. An important new element, very relevant um, with concrete policy action happening. But it's not just ERA alone. Um, I want to share with you uh, what we define under Industry 5.0. And these are my, my last slides, uh, which will take uh, us one step further than digitalization, uh, which is a very important, very important uh, trend, and we speak of the twin transition, which is transforming already European industry, accelerating production and changing the role of workers. But Industry 5.0, uh, if you come to the next slide, is bringing, I, I think it is about the following. In, in the past industrial revolutions, Great progress has been made, but the progress for the individual worker was only afterwards. So we want to start in the current industrial revolution, these transitions, uh, with uh, keeping human centricity from the very beginning and empowering industry as a system change driver, driving the system change for sustainability. And in the next slide, you have the definition um, which, um, which comes from that, um, which has wide implications for innovation actions and, and, and policy. And to conclude um, with one um, action which, we, which are, we are currently developing, we would like to uh, propose a new innovation era um, complementing the European research area with um, uh, interconnected and coherent innovation ecosystem across pan-European. Um, and uh, we are working on a strategy uh, for, for next year, uh, which will have a very important uh, um, dimension regarding the local and regional in innovation systems, connecting these, but also about entrepreneurship, um, startup visa, scoreboard for startups, just to give you some examples of what is coming up. So um, that brings me to my end and uh, conclusion. Um, the innovation is a sign of hope. Um, it is a good way to shape the future we aspire to. Uh, it's a rather short, uh, rather young European policy, but a very present one. And in the center of the current transition, which can be summarized under the headline of the Green Deal. With that, thank you very much. I stop here. Peter, thank you so much for your insightful presentation. It gives us so much food for thought, and we, and we feel that we understand better about the future direction. But of course, um, that's just how we feel. But it's, uh, it's, when it comes to implementation, that's another story. And uh, I received several questions from the audience. And um, would, you, um, would you like to answer one by one, or should I tell you all the question, and then you can answer at one time? I'm in your hands. I just don't hear you so well. So please speak uh, slowly. Yes, so I will try to speak slowlier. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. No, I don't hear you anymore. 
Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, we have received three questions for you. Three questions. Can you hear me better? No. So sorry. So we will check with the uh, technology, no. technical team. Okay. Now, now you hear That's us. Right. That's right. Okay. Great. So the first question, could you please tell us more about the performance index, which measure the promoting ownership by citizen? Because that is what we really interested to look for. The second question, can you please explain more about the concept industry 5.0? Is it just adding element from industry 4.0 or is it a totally new concept? And the last question, we heard from this morning from the Joint Research Center about S4, Smart Specialization Strategy for Sustainability. When do you think this could become an official policy of the EU with the same level of commitment at S3 today? So that's three questions we receive. We hope to hear from your thoughts Thank and you. opinion. Thank you again. I understand the first two questions, but the third one, same level of commitment regarding what? Regarding funding and direction and um, maybe policy document. Which policy document? Um, we're talking about S4. So S4 means Smart Specialization Strategy ah. for Sustainability. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, three very pertinent questions. So, um, the citizen dimension. Uh, uh, frankly, um, this is not sufficiently reflected in our current metrics. Um, so, if you have ideas, uh, please share with us. Uh, we have, uh, I mentioned the Innovation Union. Um, it um, started um, with a very strong part of social innovation. And since then, we have um, created quite a number of policy actions, awareness raising actions on social innovation. The key issue with social innovation is um, how to scale it up. And um, uh, so that is because there are fantastic ideas coming out of social innovation. Um, but to make them uh, at large scale so that they have a full impact uh, on the innovation um, ecosystem is not so straightforward. So in the, um, that, that's what I would call uh, one of the possible uh, elements of a citizen um, aspect in the innovation performance. Mm -hmm. Just to, to give you one, one example. Um, as regards Industry 5.0, of course it is building on Industry 4.0, but um, and, and we are still in a phase where not all what Industry 4.0 needs in terms of digitalization. We are speaking about automation, um, human-machine interaction, machine-to-machine -machine, uh, interaction, um, uh, data uh, use for, for advanced manufacturing, just for, to give one, some examples. We are not yet there with Industry 4.0, but Industry 5.0, building on that, is a very new ambition. It is really to make sure that industry, rather than being on the defensive, hoping that legislation on um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, reducing the environmental impact, uh, will go away or will come later, takes the lead. And we see that more and more that it is happening. Um, it's at the same time also a huge uh, um, competitive advantage. It's just for a second, take a thought experiment. If we had no Green Deal, and if the United States of America, which have now a reduction target of uh, 40% by 2030, uh, we have at least 55%, if they would go at 60%, 
If China would go uh, and set itself a very important, uh, very ambitious climate target, more ambitious than we in the EU, that would be a huge threat for our industrial basis because we would lose the competitive edge we have now in the green technologies. So with that, my argument is that the industry 5.0 um, is about our European values, the human dignity of the worker in the center and reaching sustainability is uh, a new uh, uh, compared to 4.0. And then the smart specialization strategy. This is for me a European success story because it is about the place-based innovation and connecting um, connecting clusters, connecting uh, regions um, mm. in a way which is um, uh, where, where we are only host as the EU. Uh, the actors are uh, the regions and from our side, if I understood your question correctly, the commitment is the same. My colleagues from the Joint Research Center in Sevilla do a fantastic job on smart specialization and they are, I can tell you, committed as ever. Uh, so there is uh, no worry in that respect. Thank you so much for your kind answer. And um, also, we, are, we, we have some results we would like to share with you later about the outcome for co-creation with citizens and um, the city outcome and also other projects that look at uh, sustainability and how we measure the co-creation. And um, so thanks again for your time. And we will share the document, uh, also the video online with everyone and uh, the booklet, the seed booklet that uh, we show you before. And now we have a printed version, which we will send it to you, the online version as well. So thanks again for your time, Peter. And uh, we wish you have a good afternoon. And now we will move on with the local session. So um, thank you so much again. <laughs> <laughs>